have you ever pondered why some states in india appear to be performing economically better and why some states are not performing economically on key parameters one of the determining criteria is their debt to gdp ratio or debt to gsdp ratio gdp stands for gross domestic product and gsdp stands for gross state domestic product both are one and the same when we measure at the state level whether you call it as gdp or gsdp it doesn't matter used interchangeably in today's discussion we analyze the reasons why the degree of debt of each state vary and what are all the reasons for the same the debt to gdp ratio of indian states is an important economic indicator for analyzing the overall country's ability to manage its debt burden and economic well being debt to gdp ratio of indian states in 2023-24 is what we are going to see to have the latest update on the debt scenario of our states in india indian states debt to gdp ratio influences credit ratings budgeting decisions and fiscal strategy by efficiently monitoring and maintaining this ratio states can assure long term financial stability competent fiscal management and informed economic policy decisions that's where the debt to gdp or gsdp ratio derives its importance the debt to gdp ratio of indian states is calculated by dividing the total outstanding debt of a state by its gdp or gsdp and multiplying it by 100 to get a percentage so based on this formula we can divide and classify the indian states into three categories the first category is states with high debt with a debt to gdp ratio of above 30% that is to say greater than 30% and then comes states with median debt with a debt to gdp ratio of less than or equivalent to 30% and above 25% or greater than 25% these are the states with median debt and then comes states with manageable debt with a debt to gdp ratio of less than 25% so in that classification let's look at the states under which category they fall and the reasons for the same first and foremost we are going to see states with very high debt that is to say the debt to gdp ratio of greater than 30% so in that context we have for the year 2023-24 arunachal pradesh punjab nagaland manipur meghalaya himachal pradesh bihar mizoram west bengal rajasthan kerala andhra pradesh goa uttar pradesh sikkim these are the states which are all having debt to gdp ratio of above 30% most particularly when it comes to northeastern states the factors contributing to the high debt ratio include economic inequality limited industrialization difficult terrain and sparse population whereas other high debt states have been facing challenges because of their populist measures the states debt to gdp ratio in the high debt segment rising for various causes including social welfare programs and public services budget deficits are occurring in these states as state revenues are insufficient to cover expenditure also these states are going through economic shocks and unexpected events further political forces for their survival are driving the most populist spending activities ever history has seen in the post independence era of india further state governments have limited revenue raising powers because of these circumstances debt build up is occurring in order to bridge the fiscal gap and keep up the state's economic show 
by these high debt states in India. Next, when we talk about the states with median debt, which have a debt to GDP ratio of less than 30% and above 25%. They are Madhya Pradesh with 30.4% and Uttarakhand with 28.2% and Jharkhand with 27%. These three states come under the median debt states of India. That is to say, these states fall in between the high debt states and also the manageable low debt states and the states with manageable debt with a debt to GDP ratio of less than 25% are about 9 states in India. For the year 2023-24, they are Tamil Nadu with 25.6, Haryana 25.5, Assam 24.4, Telangana 23.8, Chhattisgarh 25.0, Karnataka 23, Maharashtra 18.2, Gujarat 15.3, Odisha 13.1. In a holistic manner, when we look at because of their debt to GDP ratio being 25.6 in the case of Tamil Nadu and 25.5 in the case of Haryana, these states can also be called as states with manageable debt. The states in India with the best debt to GDP ratio are so due to their state specific reasons. Mining and agriculture contribute significantly to Chhattisgarh's strong economic growth. The rise of Tamil Nadu, Haryana, Telangana and Karnataka is fueled by their strong information technology and industry friendly environment and also spread of industrial sectors. Mumbai for Maharashtra is the center of diverse and vibrant economy. Gujarat's industrialization and effective tax collection system adds to its forte. Odisha's mineral resources and expanding manufacturing sector are contributing for its debt to GDP ratio, which is under manageable segment. Assam also got added into the manageable debt segment states because its industry is contributing around 30% and 25% is contributed by its agriculture. Having seen the classification of states based on their debt profiles, now let's look at the implications of high debt to GDP ratios among Indian states. A high debt to GDP ratio indicates that a state's debt burden is significantly greater than its economic production and it demonstrates financial vulnerability and restricted fiscal flexibility. It may also cause alarm among investors and credit rating agencies, resulting in a higher borrowing rates. States with high debt levels confront many issues, some of which include high interest payments, which limit funding for essential services like infrastructure, education, and healthcare. Limited budgetary flexibility due to high debt levels and high debt levels restrict response to economic downturns or emergencies. Further, high debt reduces investor confidence, leading to high borrowing costs and slow economic growth, and it creates impact on credit ratings. Downgrades indicate increased credit risk and financial difficulties. To properly address these difficulties, states must put in place austerity measures, fiscal reforms, and debt reduction initiatives. I would like to state in brief some of the case studies like that of Kerala some time ago. Despite its outstanding social and human development metrics, Kerala has one of the highest debt to GDP ratios among Indian states owing to extensive spending on social welfare programs and freebies. This high debt level has resulted in increasing interest payments, limiting budget allocations for key services. To address this issue, Kerala pursued policies such as budget consolidation, revenue enhancement through taxes and non-tax revenue streams and austerity measures. Similarly, in the case of Punjab, where still 
the debt to GDP ratio is very high. The reasons for the same include exorbitant agricultural subsidies, pension commitments and freebies. This put tremendous strain on the state's finances, decreasing education and healthcare funding. Punjab implemented governmental measures to address this challenge of high debt, including the Punjab Budget Debt Responsibility and Budget Management Act, which aimed to reduce budget deficits and restrict debt accumulation. The state also tried to diversify its revenue stream improving tax collection and by reducing subsidies. At this juncture, all states including the high debt states, median level debt states and the low debt states or manageable debt states put together, they all need to keep in mind the important economic principle of prudential spending and they need to implement fiscal discipline by reducing budget deficits and debt accumulation. States must concentrate on increasing revenue with effective tax strategies. And states also need to adopt responsible borrowing methods. States immediately must go for debt restructuring through refinancing their debt at lower interest rates. States must invest in productive sectors to boost the economic growth and states must go for a drive of enhanced credit worthiness by implementing the economic austerity measures and improve their credit ratings. States must also focus on the aspect of reducing borrowing costs leading to lower interest payments. All in all, states must aim for sustainable finances by maintaining long-term budgetary stability. At the same time, some of the states may also argue by stating that there are economic disparities in their state and there are demographic factors and there are some kind of external shocks and there are some political decisions for their survival and also they speak about regional disparities. Be that as it may, those issues needs to be addressed from the economic angle, keeping in mind the long-term interests of the state and the future revenue generation abilities of the state. Though temporarily, some kind of freebies may be given to bridge the gap of economic shocks, but that shouldn't become a regular feature in any state, leading to a feeling that taxpayers' money is pledged on freebies and the state's economies are made to face troubles and that burden thrown on to the future generations. Hope the information is useful. Thank you very much.